today we're going to be talking about the dependency inversion principle. Oftentimes we create dependencies without realizing what we're doing. When we do so, it's kind of like soldering a lamp directly into the electrical wiring in a wall. It's definitely a bad thing. It makes it reduces flexibility. It increases uh, the proneness to defects because making change in one area of the system will affect another area of the system uh, without knowing it's kind of hidden. And today we're hopefully we'll show you some ways you can improve that that will result in a better experience for our internal partners and also a better experience for our end user customers ultimately. First thing we want to do is download Sonar and just click the zip file right here. And I'm going to extract mine right into my projects folder. While well, I'm waiting for that to extract, I'll give you a little bit of history on the dependency inversion principle. Many of you know I'm a big fan of Robert C. Martin. This is why. He wrote this article back in 1996 and has been trying to evangelize uh, this principle ever since. I believe it's one of the most least known but also uh, underutilized principles. You know, it can give us the most bang for the buck if we know this one principle. It will help us write much better code. All right, that should be extracted now. Let me go out to my directory where I extracted it in the command prompt. And to launch it, you got to go into the bin folder, go into your specific operating system version, and do the sonar batch file or on Linux and Mac, the sonar shell script. Sonar.sh start. All right, it's running now. I've got a sample project I've created. I called it the dependency inversion demo. I put it out on GitHub for fun. Uh, if you want to pull it down, it's out there. My username is Winglem. Um, in our app, we have static void main. All it does is call into this class dependency one dot print hello world. That's just a static call. Dependency one just calls dependency two. Dependency two calls dependency three. And dependency three just does a system dot out dot print line. Pretty simple, uh, not too fancy. Definitely demonstrating my coding proficiency. All right. The next thing we're going to do is run a sonar analysis on this project. To do that, go to the directory where the project is and do maven sonar colon sonar. I got an error here saying that the Sonar server cannot be reached. Uh oh, let me make sure Sonar is running. Yep, it's probably just maybe a little slow. Let's see if I can pull it up over right here. There it is, it's blank at the moment. Let me just try running that again. Yeah, it's working now. All right, I know what I should have done with my profit sharing this year, but I knew Retina Display MacBook Pro. <laughs> and the analysis is complete. Let me go back over here into Sonar and I'm just going to refresh. And this is the project that I just analyzed. Twenty six lines of code. 
and uh, no package cycles which is good let's look what the design looks like you can see app depends on dependency one this is a dependency structure matrix it, on the dash line it's, it's the uh, row that's being analyzed and then the number is means it's being depended on by the dash line above it so app depends on dependency one dependency one depends on dependency two dependency two depends on dependency three so this is exactly what you'd expect uh, coming out of the software that I displayed before. So now I'm going to do something maybe unexpected in the app. I'm going to add a string or a method public static void get hello world. Now you may think this is a bit contrived, and of course it is. But imagine, you know, if you, you have an order, our order SBL, and it's calling into shipping. There may be something that shipping needs to get out of the order, like which items are going to be shipped, or the weight of the items being shipped may come out of the order. Uh, that's kind of what this example is demonstrating. So let me go to my dependency three here, and rather than just printing hello world, I'm going to make it call that static method I just created. App dot get hello world. All right, let's see if this program still works. And it works. Excellent. Let's go analyze this project now. Let me go back and take a look at uh, how this turned out. So first thing I'm going to do is just kind of refresh here. Oh, there's a red mark right there, which means we have a cyclical dependency. So that means this app depends on dependency one and also Dependency one, dependency two, dependency oh, dependency three depends on app, and that's where cyclical dependency is happening. That's not good. If we look at how this affected our stats, you can see we have a 50% file tangle index and uh, one cycle. If you go into cycles, it just shows us what we were looking at. So this is really bad because if we make a change now in our dependency one, dependency two, or dependency three, we're affecting app. It looked much better before where app was on top and it was dependent on the dependencies. Having the dependencies depend on an app is not a good thing. Um, let's see. Let me show you how to fix this. We're going to invert this dependency. First I'm going to make this not be static. And I'm going to say OK, 
create a new package here. I'm going to call it interfaces. And I'm going to call my interface I hello world. Yep, we'll add it to Git. And the signature in the interface is just going to match this method call. That was not what I wanted to grab. Let me undo that. Let me just write it. Uh, you don't need public because it's already in, in the interface. String get hello world. And that's our interface. So let's go to app. App implements get hello world in the, from the I hello world interface. Let's re rebuild this and this should go to green. I'm expecting. Oh yeah, yeah. All dinner. You gotta import it. Let me build that again. <laughs> Live programming for you. And dependency three now has an unused import. Oh, let's do an app dot hello world. Well, let's see, that's not what we really want. What we want this to take is a parameter. I'm gonna call it a I hello world. And rather than calling our old get yeah, hello world, I'm going to call I hello world dot get hello world. Let me import that. Alt enter. Okay, so dependency three create hello world now takes a parameter that's the interface called I hello world. I need to get that parameter from dependency two. So I'm just going to make this take I hello world and make it pass in I hello world. There we go. And dependency one, the same thing. And it's going to pass that into dependency two. And alt enter. Oh, come on. Fail and this the import statement. There we go. Alt enter and dependency two. Alt enter. Let's build it now and see if we get any warnings. Yeah, there's one error. I'm not passing in the right thing into dependency one. So let's do 
hi, hello world. Let's create a new one of those. And we'll call it the same thing as we call it inside our classes. Hi, hello world. And we'll just make it be a new app. And pass it in right here. Let's build it now. Okay. Make sure this still runs the way we expect it to run. And it did print hello world. It does still run. And you can see the app class now has no knowledge about dependency three or even dependency one. So we've removed that code dependency and dependency three doesn't know about app at all. We've removed that code dependency. They both depend on this I hello world interface. Now let's go run a sonar analysis and see how this came out. All right, I'm gonna jump over to Chrome. I'm gonna refresh over here. You can see our package tangle index is back down to zero. We have 38 lines of code. Those of you who are concerned about the four violations, let's take a look at what those are. Nothing too bad, pretty easy to fix. Uh, let's look at the design now and see, it turned out like we expected. There's our interface. And here's our class structure above that interface. And you can see there's no more cyclical dependencies. Hopefully that gives you enough information to go forth and, and use the principle, uh, the dependency inversion principle. If you need any more information, use Google. It's the best place to find stuff.